we were discussing probability sampling and we finished at area sampling now today we are going to start with a double sampling now for instance in a job exit interview some individuals that is maybe a subset of the original cluster sample out of maybe say 50 people that left the job 10 people indicated that they were resigning because of philosophical differences with the company policies now the researcher might want to do an in-depth interview with these individuals to obtain further information regarding the nature of the policies they disliked the actual philosophical differences and why these particular issues were central to the individual's value system such additional detailed information from the target group through the double sampling design could help the company to look for ways for of retaining people in the future now initially you interviewed 50 60 70 80 people for instance initially uh, through area sampling you identified that okay 100 people have left the job you interview those 100 people and out of those 100 people you know that okay some of them left the job because of normal reasons that okay uh, i found a, another job um, i think i should have uh, a break from the job uh, maybe other reasons out of those 100 people 50 said that they are leaving the job because of philosophical differences with the company policies now this is something that is not normal people most often do not resign because this of this particular reason now when the researchers see this particular reason or the researcher saw this particular reason he or she thought that this requires additional information gathering so out of those 100 people these 50 people were selected again and they were interviewed again to identify why and what are the philosophical differences why are they resigning what kind of philosophical differences there exist how how is there a mismatch between their value system and the organizational value system how is there a mismatch between their principles their ethics and what the organization is following now this is double sampling you sample again from that particular original sample because you want in-depth information now that was all about probability sampling the next is non-probability sampling where probability sampling associated a chance with the elements of the population to be selected as subject in the sample in non-probability sampling designs the element in the population do not have any probabilities there is no associated chance of being chosen as a sample subjects this means that the findings from the study of the sample cannot be confidently generalized to the population because you are not able to associate chance with the elements in the population to be selected as subjects in the sample you cannot generalize your findings to the population this is one of the severe limitations of non probability sampling now researcher may at times be less concerned about generalizability than obtaining some preliminary information in a quick and inexpensive way they would then resort to non probability sampling now when researchers are not concerned about generalizability of their findings uh, we did discuss generalizability in uh, the hallmarks of uh, research now if you are not concerned about the generalizability and you want some initial quick information on different aspects of uh, your population or how different variables could be related with each other what you are doing is or what you want when, what you should do is you should go for a non probability sampling now sometimes non probability sampling could be the only way to obtain data now this is what we discuss in uh, on the coming slides why is it the only way to obtain the data because there is no other way to obtain data and then obviously you will have to resort to non probability sampling now the first of the uh, non probability sampling techniques is convenience sampling most often used and it it refers to the collection of information from members of the population who are conveniently available to prove it or to provide it sorry so convenience sampling refers to collection of data from the elements in the population to be the subjects in the sample who are very conveniently available for instance i want to research on what students think about online classes or their perception about online learning the most convenient for me is obviously my set of students who I have been teaching for the past 6-7 weeks since this COVID-19 emerged. So 
for instance another instance could be i want to study customers who buy online the best option could be my inner circle my friends my family my colleagues who shop online so this is convenient sampling because that particular sample or that particular set of or subset of population is conveniently available to me so you go for selection of elements from the population to be subjects in your sample that are easily conveniently readily available now the next is purposive sampling now instead of obtaining information from those who are most readily or conveniently available it might be sometimes or it might sometimes become necessary to obtain information from specific target groups the sampling here is confined to specific types of people who can provide the desired information now instead of going for your convenience you look for people who can obviously or actually provide you the desired information that you want either because they are only ones who have it or conform to some criteria set by the research so either th these are the people who ha who have got access to that particular information or they fit a particular criteria that a researcher has set now for instance i want information on uh, uh, those people who have been uh, who have faced fraud uh, online in terms of shopping when they are sh they, they were shopping online they they they, they were uh, a victim of fraud so if i am studying fraud in online shopping obviously conveniently it it's very convenient for me to go for my family my friends without any indication of uh, whether they have been uh, a target of a fraud or not but purposefully the right for kind of information i will get only from those people who have been a target of fraud now there are two forms of uh, purposive sampling one is judgment sampling and the other is quota sampling now what is judgment sampling judgment sampling involves the choice of subjects who are most advantageously placed or in best position to provide the information required just as i mentioned if you want to collect information regarding uh, uh, fraud or uh, uh, frauds that that are committed online while we are shopping so the best person or the best best suitable respondent would be those who have faced a fraud or in other case another example could be for instance if a researcher wants to find out what it takes for women managers to make it to the top the only people who can give first hand information are the women who have risen to the positions of the presidents vice presidents and important top level executives in work organization rather than women who haven't worked in their life or rather than women who, who 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 are who are unable to rise to the top the best suitable people or the best suitable women who are at most advantageous position to answer your queries are those who have risen to the top now judgment sampling may curtail the generalizability of the findings due to the fact that we are using a sample of experts who are conveniently available to us now obviously you are focusing on people that are most suitable to answer the information but again there is a some certain amount of convenience in there you are focusing obviously if i am living in pakistan i can't target senior managers or president vice president who are actually uh, females and have risen to the top of their companies so if i i can't target fortune 500 companies i have to resort to women or uh, females in pakistan so obviously this could curtail the generalizability of the findings now next is quota sampling it's very similar to your stratified random sampling there you had strata in here you have got quotas so quota sampling a second type of purposive sampling ensures that certain groups are adequately represented in the study through the assignment of a quota generally the quota fixed for each subgroup is based on the total numbers of of each group in the population however since this is non probability sampling plan the results are obviously non generalizable now it's the same thing you divide your uh, in in probability sampling you are dividing into different strata in uh, quota sampling you are actually dividing your population into certain groups now in stratified random sampling each of the strata was sampled using simple random sampling whereas in quota sampling each group is sampled using convenience sampling now for instance the work attitude of blue collar workers in an organization is quite different from that of white collar workers if there are 60% blue collar workers and 40% white collar workers in this organization and 
if the total of 30 people are to be interviewed to find the answers of the research question then a quota of 18 that is proportional quotas blue collar workers and 12 white collar workers will form the sample because these numbers represent 60 percent and 40 percent of the sample size the same as we did in your stratified random sampling now how do you get these 18 and 12 people from these particular groups you do convenience sampling so this was all about non-probability sampling